Okay, so today I'm going to be sharing the six don'ts of your very first trip to Disney World. All right, so the first tip that I have, and you might not wanna hear this because I know how expensive Disney World is, but don't try to make an entire day of it in one go. So by saying that, I don't mean that you shouldn't try to get your money's worth because you absolutely should. But what I do mean is that you should not wake up at the crack of dawn and expect to stay at the parks until say 10, 11 p.m. and still have everyone in good spirits. It's just not realistic. It is very rarely possible. And unfortunately, it's something that as a family, we witness other families trying to do all the time. So let me talk about some workarounds, some do's for maximizing your time. Um, one of these is going to tie into number two, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But primarily what you want to do is you want to bounce back and forth between the parks and the hotel or the resort where you're staying so you can get some downtime so you can kind of refuel and it's going to make all the difference in the world. It's going to help you to have more energy. It's going to help you to have more patience and honestly to be able to get through a morning through the evening and possibly night at the park of your choice. Okay, so don't number two does tie into number one, like I already mentioned, and that is don't try to save a lot of money by staying off property. The reason why I already kind of talked a little bit about in number one is you wanna make it easy to get to and from the resort or hotel where you're staying. Now here's the good news. Disney has lots of different resorts to choose from, including what they consider to be value resorts. These value resorts are going to cost usually somewhere starting in the 150 to 180 range, um, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the season and what specials are being run at that time. Um, if you, you know, consider that cost, it's comparable to the cost of the hotels in the area. Now, if you are really strapped for cash right now and you are looking for a way to save money, then of course this is a place where you could easily cut to do so. But if you were already looking at spending in the mid to high 100 ranges, then I would say consider staying on property. It's going to make it so much easier to get to and from your resort or hotel. Even better if you're on the transportation line. I mean, of course there's buses that go to all of the resorts. If you are on the monorail line or the Skyliner route, it makes it even easier to jump back and forth from the parks to your resort. Number three, don't try to wait it out. Now by this, I mean, don't try to skimp on the fast pass and the lightning lanes for rides that you really wanna do. Now I could probably create, and I probably will and should create another video all about lightning lane and fast pass, um, but those are areas that you really don't want to skimp and here's why it really adds to the experience so much if you don't have to wait two hours to ride the ride that you want to ride now of course if you're traveling solo if you are traveling with a friend with a partner um, if you are traveling with a sibling an adult sibling fine you know waiting in line for two hours no big deal if you're traveling with your family, it is worth its weight in gold to get those fast passes and lightning lanes. So do your research on those ahead of time. Go ahead and book those for the days that you're going to be there. Um, you do actually right now have to book them the day of, so you wanna get up early in the morning, um, 7 a.m. if you're staying on property and a little bit later if you're staying off property. Um, but you wanna get up early and you wanna book those. So then you can ride the rides that you want to ride, when you want to ride them, it just makes everything so much easier. You can do more, you know, if you're trying to pack a lot into one day, then it makes more sense to wait a fraction of the time in lines um, and get to see and do more at the parks. All right, don't number four is don't go without either one, bringing your own food or two, making advanced dining reservations. Dining reservations can be really competitive at Disney. So you wanna find out when your advanced dining reservation window opens, set an alert on your calendar and that day, wake up early and go ahead and make all of your dining reservations for your stay. So that is out of the way and taken care of. You know, it can get really hot in Orlando. So it's a really great way to come inside and cool off to have a dining reservation where you can just sit down for an hour or two. Um, it also kind of just helps to recharge. You know, we talked a little bit about going 
back and forth from the hotel or the resort. Um, this is another way you could do that if say you were not staying on property or you just wanted to take a quicker break. Um, so it allows you to recharge a little bit, kind of get, get the energy going again um, and get back out there and enjoy the parks that you paid a lot of money for. All right, don't number five is don't go during peak seasons. Now, this is probably unavoidable for a lot of people. So I'm throwing it out there for those who have flexible schedules. And I understand that that is not the case all the time. So the times that are the busiest are going to be the summertime, of course, because everyone is out of school and also around the holidays. Christmas time is especially busy. Um, even around Halloween time, it can get really busy. If you're going during peak season, expect a peak number of people to be there. They let a lot of people into the parks and it can get very crowded and it's going to increase your wait time, which again goes back to the other recommendation to get those lightning lanes and genie pluses for the rides that you really, really wanna prioritize. All right, don't number six don't try to outlast everyone. So I think this is a strategy that our family had tried originally and it did not go well. Um, I will say there's a caveat to that and I'll share that in just a second. But generally speaking, staying late does not necessarily mean fewer people. And honestly, the mad rush whenever it's time to exit the parks of everyone cramming together to squeeze through these kind of narrow walkways is not an optimal time. So by staying late, you are probably just getting more and more tired yourself and you're probably adding on to the amount of time that it takes you to get back to your hotel or resort because everyone else is also trying to stay late. And with that, you're going to get longer lines waiting for the buses, the monorail, just to exit the park. Um, it can be quite chaotic. So I would say tap out a little bit early if you wanna avoid that mad rush at the end. Now, I did mention that there is an exception to that. The exception would be if you are staying at one of the resorts, um, and I'm specifically kind of referring to Magic Kingdom right now, but if you're leaving Magic Kingdom, that is probably the busiest place of all the parks to leave at Park Exit. Um, so if you are staying at one of the monorail resorts where you're actually gonna jump on a different monorail than pretty much everyone else um, who's just exiting the park, you're only going to be exiting and getting on the monorail with those who are also staying at the monorail resorts. Um, so that's gonna cut down on your wait time. Additionally, if you are staying at the Grand Floridian or at the Contemporary, there are, you can walk. So you don't even have to worry about the crowds. If you are staying at Wilderness Lodge or the Polynesian, um, there are boats that go back and forth. There's also a boat for the Grand Floridian as well, um, but I wanted to mention that it's also walkable. So there's different ways that you can get to those resorts. So those resorts are definitely the easiest to get to. So you can kind of avoid that mad dash at the end, even if you do decide to stay until park close. I would love to know if you're planning for an upcoming Disney trip. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be making future videos about Disney. I've already made the one video about Disney resorts, which again, I will link in the comments below, but I would love to know if you have an upcoming trip and where you plan on staying and if you have any questions that we can answer for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video to be helpful, it would mean so much to us if you would give it a like and subscribe to our channel. We put out videos like this to help fellow travelers get inside details to their travel destinations. In addition to sharing places that we love to hopefully provide you with some inspiration for your upcoming trips. What is the other one called? Urgh, now I need to look it up. and get some nice, fresh AC. Is that a thing? Nice, fresh AC. I don't think it is. Hmm. That's not the whole thing. It's just weird. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs>